Hello everybody, my name is Nick, CEO of Thinkable Creations. And today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to assemble your Hyperpod 135. So I'm gonna go over both versions of the Hyperpod, the regular version, as well as the EAF version. I'll have timestamps down below, as well as the link to a PDF version of this entire guide that you can download and maybe print out. If you have any questions through the whole process of the assembly, be sure to leave a comment. If you actually don't have one of these yet and you just wanna learn more, link in the description to where you can look at these and maybe get one for yourself. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, there are two versions of the Hyperpod. So the one without the EAF or with the EAF. I'm gonna start with the more complicated one, which is definitely the one with the EAF mount. I'll put a timestamp down below on when this instruction start, as well as all the different steps for each one. So starting with the EAF version. So let's go ahead and open up the box. So you open up the box and there's probably uh, your receipt in there at the top. So once you take that out, you have the lens gear. You have a little felt pouch with two things inside. So you have the lens cap that goes on the end of your lens when you're not shooting, as well as a focusing mask to when, if you don't use the EAF, uh, you can go ahead and use this just include it as kind of a bonus. Okay, and then this little baggie has a lot of little goodies we'll get into in a second. But then next we have this. This is the actual EAF mount. So your EAF goes in here and it goes on the side. You have the two actual mounting rings. And then the last thing in the box is the Thinkable Creations dovetail. Okay, so this is everything in that little goodie bag. So first you have two of the guide shoes. So this is where either your guide scope or your ASI Air or anything else you wanna mount goes in here. And then over here, we have both the assembly parts and then the spare parts. So these spare parts, you can go ahead and store in a safe place just in case you need them in the future. These are the actual screws that we're gonna need to assemble the Hyperpod. And then lastly, we have two tools that you're gonna need. So these are two different hex keys. One's a six millimeter. One is a three millimeter. The only other tool that you're gonna need that I do not supply is a Phillips head screwdriver. So just like the regular cross screwdriver. Okay, so the first step in actually assembling the Hyperpod 135 EAF version is to take both of the mounting rings. So again, this one that says Thinkable Creations is the front and this one is the back. Both of these knobs these are the locking screws on the side. They go facing down. So you just face them up like this with the Thinkable Creations facing left. And then you take one of the guide shoes and go ahead and lay it on top and slightly move the rings as needed to be properly spaced. In the assembly parts bag, so you wanna take two of the Phillips head screws and insert them into the top two holes and screw it down. Do not screw anything down over tightened because you might damage the actual plastic. So go ahead and screw those in. Also, if I didn't say this already, be sure to use a manual screwdriver because if using a power drill, you might actually over tighten these screws and damage the plastic. So always make sure to use a manual screwdriver. So the EAF is next. So this hole should go right in the middle, so it mounts just like this with the thinkable in the front. So again, you take two of the Phillips head screws, insert them into these two holes, and screw them down. Okay, now that we have the EAF mount attached, we're going to actually mount in your EAF. So go ahead and take your ZWO EAF. And this top part, you wanna flip it around so it's like upside down. You're gonna to wanna to stick this little um, actual focusing motor through that little gap and into there. And you'll see it lines up with these two holes. So in the assembly pack, you're gonna find the two smallest little hex screws and they actually go into there to secure the EAF. So you're gonna use the shiny, smaller actual hex key to attach these. Again, when you're actually tightening these, make sure they're secure, not over tightened. Okay, so that looks good. 
So now we actually attach the EAF gear, so this one. So go ahead and take a look at the EAF gear. So on the bottom, you see this hole, and there should be a screw that's going through and poking its head through the little hole. If it's not, you wanna make sure that if it's, uh, if it's too loose, you wanna tighten the screw using a Phillips head screwdriver to where it's just poking out just like this. And also if it's too far like this, you wanna back it up and just put it a little bit in. Okay, so now we actually take the EAF gear and then looking at the little knob on the EAF, you're gonna see this little flat part. You're gonna wanna locate where that is. So for me, it's pointing towards the inside of the mount. So whichever side that part of the screw is pointing out, you wanna put that on the same as the flat part of this knob. So in my case, it looks like this. So now that we have the screw in the same place as the flat part of the knob, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. Again, do not over tighten this part. We just need it to be secure enough so that this EAF gear doesn't just pop off the end. So here I tighten it just enough so I can't move it. And if it wobbles just a little bit, that is perfectly fine. So the EAF mount is completely done. So the next step is to attach the other guide shoe, just the same way you did the first one. So lay it across with these screws facing the back. Take two of the Phillips screws, attach it, do not over tighten. So now we can attach the actual dovetail. So you want to take the dovetail and the remaining bigger hex screws. What I do is I do it facing down, put these just a little bit out, hold them in with my thumbs, and then you can line them up and then turn them with your hands just a little bit to get them in place, okay? And then take the bigger hex key that was included and go ahead and tighten them down. Again, do not over tighten. As long as it's secure, you don't need to crank it down because you'll just damage the plastic. I print these, all the parts in a strong plastic known as PETG, P-E-T-G. So the parts themselves are really strong, but again, they aren't metal, they're 3D printed, so be sure to not over tighten and damage the parts. So to attach the lens gear, go ahead and unscrew both of the locking knobs. You don't need to unscrew them all the way, just enough to be able to rotate up and actually open the rings. And if the rings are a little bit difficult to open up, like if they don't try and force it, cause again, you probably break it, uh, take your Phillips head screwdriver and unscrew these hinge screws, just fourth of a turn, eighth of a turn, just a little bit. And then now you can open it up a lot. Okay, setting everything aside that we've done so far, we take our Samyang or Rokinon lens Rotate the focuser all the way to infinity focus first. And then we're gonna take our lens gear and we're gonna unscrew this screw that's locking it together. You don't need to take the screw all the way out. You just need to loosen it just until the end. So now it gives it a little bit of room. So facing this down, usually I like to do, we slide it up onto the ring and then if you like the gear to be perfectly in line with the other gear, you wanna angle it towards the back of the actual focusing rubber. So like this, keeping the lens at infinity focus. We're gonna tighten this screw down and you can tighten it all the way this time. And usually it starts squeaking when you know it's tight. Okay, so now that we have the lens gear secured, we can actually mount the lens into the whole mount. Okay, so you might have noticed that the front rings are slightly different levels instead of the back ones are just flat. So these go into those grooves right onto the lens. So these line up with that groove, just like this. And usually I like to put this little knob just to the right like that. Go ahead and close the whole mounting system and you'll see and you'll see when you close everything these gears start to line up. 
this is when you can reattach these locking screws and you can screw them all the way down this time. Okay, so now the lens is secured. Got the gears lining up. So the assembly is pretty much done. So now all we gotta do is attach our camera at the back, attach our guide scope, and then attach either an ASI Air or any other accessories you want. And then on the end, we can put our lens cap. Okay, and this is what my entire setup looks like. So I got my Hyperpod, the EAF, I got a big old guide scope that's completely unnecessary on the top. You can just use a small guider. And then I got my ASI Air on the side. And then I got my ASI 294 MC Pro. And then right in here in the filter drawer, I got an Optolong Elkstream. Okay, be sure to follow me on Instagram or social media and tag me in the photos you take with their setups. I'll go. So now we're gonna go ahead and assemble your regular Hyperpod 135. Okay, so open up the box, you probably have your receipt on the top. You can go ahead and take that out. And then right at the top is a little felt pouch. Inside is gonna be a Batnov focusing mask for your lens, as well as a replacement, as well as a replacement lens cap that goes on when you're not shooting. So then we got both of the mounting rings. The front ring is the one that says Thinkable Creations, and then the other one is the back ring. Then we have a six inch dovetail for actually mounting to your mount. And then we have a bag of goodies, which I can go into now. So let's go ahead and take everything out of this little baggie. Okay, so first thing inside is a Thinkable business card. This is all my social medias, as well as an email to email me ideas, as well as if you have any questions. And also be sure to leave any comments down below. And then we have two pieces. These are the guide shoes. These go on the top and sides to be able to mount your guide scope and the ASI Air and such. And then we have a bag for a six inch hex key. So this is gonna be useful later. The only other tool that you're gonna need that I do not supply is a regular Phillips head screwdriver, so the cross. And we have two little baggies. So we have the assembly parts, which we're gonna actually use to assemble, and then the spare parts, which you can keep in a safe place just in case you lose any parts. Okay, let's go ahead and start. The first step is gonna to be to take both of the mounting rings. The one that says Thinkable Creations goes on the front. So have the Thinkable logo facing the left and then have the back one with this knob facing down, just right behind it like this. So next you're gonna take one of the guide shoes and lay it on top with those two holes matching the top screw holes. Next, in the assembly parts bag, you're going to take two of the smaller Phillips head screws, put them into these holes, and screw them down with a manual screwdriver. Do not use a power drill. And be sure when you get them all the way to the end to have them secure, but not over tightened. You could actually damage the plastic by over tightening any part of the assembly. Okay, now that we have both of those screws on whichever side you want, I usually choose this side. The left side, take the other guide shoe and you're gonna put it on the side and attach it the same way that you did the top one. Okay, now that we have the two guide shoes attached, so the next part you take the dovetail, flip it upside down to where you can see the indented holes. You take the remaining two larger hex screws, go ahead and put them in there. And then what I like to do is to kind of space them out about the same length as the holes and then go ahead and line them up and then screw it in just a little bit so you can gauge where the actual dovetail is going and you can choose wherever position you like the most. Then you take the hex key that was included, go ahead and secure it. Remember, do not over tighten. Okay, so to actually open the rings, you go ahead and unscrew both of the locking screws just an, you don't need to take them all the way off, just enough to be able to flip them up and then open the rings. And if the rings are a little stiff, they don't open all the way, take your screwdriver, turn the hinge screws just, just a tiny bit to loosen them up. And that way you can open it all the way as much as you want. Okay, once you have the rings open, you can actually take your Rokinon or Samyang lens Place it towards the front and you'll notice this little indent where this side is taller than this. This lines up just perfectly with that front ring. 
And then the back ring goes in that little indent right here. Now that the lens is in there, you just close it. And then these screws, you can actually tighten all the way down to help secure the lens in there. So now your lens is secure. Go ahead and attach your camera at the back, either DSLR or in my case, I have my 294MC Pro color camera. And then you can attach something like a guide scope. And on this other side, I'm gonna go ahead and attach an ASI Air Pro in my case. And then also one last thing, when you're not shooting, you can go ahead and take your lens cap and put it right on the end. Okay, so that is the entire video, both Hyperpods assembled and put together. Be sure to follow my social media that I have linked on the business card. I would love to see all of your photos so be sure to let me know. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day. Be sure to subscribe for more of my videos as well as product review videos and more updates from my channel and my shop. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day and I wish you all clear skies.